Trying to get this bad boy out. What is up guys, how's it going? Mike Visuals here. And in this video, we're gonna be going over how I created my most recent upload. Actually, it's not the most recent upload. Two uploads ago, I uploaded the Razer Laptop Studio Edition commercial. We're gonna be going over how I did those with some BTS and it kind of gives you an idea of what really goes into these shots. And I think it's a lot more than you think. It's a lot of green screen work, sort of After Effects and a lot of just teamwork. Teamwork is everything when it comes to a shoot. You get really talented people all coming together and kind of just figuring out how to get what we envisioned. And this is how we did it. All right, so step one was to actually plan the project. So prior to filming, George and I spent a couple of months picking our brains, hashing out some ideas of what we could actually do. So we pitched some to Razor, see what they liked, see what they didn't like. And we came to a conclusion that we were gonna create a video with lots of different creators, all using the Razor Blade Studio Edition to complete one project. So after we did that, the next step was to create a storyboard. Storyboards are so important for when just completing any project. We always create a storyboard first, and here's some behind the scenes of Georgia going through how we did that. All right, gee, storyboard, what are we doing? Yeah, so I put out basically, just put together this table of a shot by shot list. So this is what we're gonna be following over the next few days, just to make sure that we um, get every single detail of the story. So it's really basic, but just here I've got the shot that we need to get, the location where it is. So most of these are all in the flat at the moment, but later on we'll be going outside onto the streets. Who, so cast, Mike and crew is usually me and Keenan. And then props, um, so for example, the opening scene has a green screen. We've obviously got the dome light that we'll be using. And then this final column is just any extra notes. And as we go through the day, um, I'm just going to tick off each shot just to make sure that we get everything for the story. Okay, so the storyboard is complete. Next up is to actually start filming. So the first shot on the storyboard was the intro of me waking up with the time lapse behind me. I've never actually done the effect before, but I was not gonna rotoscope myself out behind a time lapse because it was just gonna be a complete waste of time because it just wouldn't look that real and it's not the cleanest approach you can do. So this is where the green screen came in handy. This thing actually saved a lot of time. No more rotoscoping for me, to, for, to be honest, for the future. This is the, the, the key to it, guys. Get a green screen or blue screen. So planning out this shot was super important. We had to make sure the tripod for both the time lapse and the video um, back plate was in line so we as soon as we put down the tripod we couldn't move it because when editing you would see that kind of shift if you did accidentally move the tripod so when we were on set as soon as we set the tripod down no one could move it so the first step was to get that back plate of me waking up using the black magic and here is actually the layer we use next to me now this is the first layer of the shot so the next step after that was getting the time lapse of the room. So like I said, we didn't move the tripod and we had to carefully take the black magic off the camera, uh, off the tripod and put the 1DX on. And we just had to make sure the focal length was the same. No one could move the tripod because if we did move it, you would see that slight shift in those two different layers and it would just ruin the effect. So we got that time lapse successfully. No one moved the tripod and then we headed into After Effects and this is how we kind of broke. The hardest part of creating that shot was actually still editing it. It was so much easier using the green screen than rotoscoping, but I still, in hindsight, I should have even got a bigger green screen. Uh, not that I think I could have handled any bigger than that because that's still just a nuisance to put away. But I should have filled up the whole kind of back plate behind me of uh, with green instead of just a corner of the, uh, the bed because there was still a little bit of the bed still not covered by the green screen. So in post I had to mask around that and you could still see in the final result that little bit of the rotoscoping chitterinus. Still happy with how it came out. Okay, so the next segment we're gonna be discussing is the shot of myself walking down the street and then suddenly you see the green screen appear behind me. I couldn't have done this without the talented friends that helped me out back, Keenan, 
Oliver J and obviously Georgia. She was behind me with the green screen and it, you've seen how big it is and Georgia's not the biggest person and she was holding it and uh, great job G, you, you smashed it. But the first step to create this was Google Maps. Google Maps is always my go-to to just location hunting, uh, where to find the best kind of vantage points and just checking where the sun's gonna rise up. I use photo pills for that as well and I kind of use the two together and it really helps me out when just planning shoots. Once we found the street we wanted to use, we headed there with all the team and here is behind the scenes of myself discussing what's going on and how we are gonna create this shot. All right, so we're just running through kind of a complicated sequence. We've got Ollie on the camera and we're gonna get a shot of myself walking in front of the blue screen and Ollie's gonna then slowly pan out of kind of the blue uh, area and it reveals kind of this BTS uh, kind of looking production and it kind of breaks that third wall and I think it's quite a unique shot so I think the hardest thing is to just line it up and get the timing right so uh, let's just try and error it. By the way, is it third or fourth wall? I think it's fourth, fourth, think it's fourth wall. <laughs> I was like, what's the third? G uh, on the blue screen right now. She's, she's, uh, she's the uh, key, part to, key the part to the shoot. But yeah, like I said, timing is everything. Breaking that fourth wall. And uh, yeah, try and error it. Let's see how this goes. We had Oliver J on the, uh, the gimbal. We had Georgia behind me. We had Keenan with the B cam and back with the uh, boom pole. And then we also had Bobby with the clapper at the end. And it probably took around, I think we did it in five takes, but it was just a timing kind of uh, masterpiece at the end. We had to all make sure we were lined up. Georgia was definitely tracking me, because like I said, the screen screen's huge. We had to get Georgia in line with the camera, but she couldn't even see where the camera is. The green screen's in front of her, so we had to do that a couple of times. And then we had to make sure that Bobby was with the clapper, and he made sure that the clapper kind of went like, filled the whole screen like this. And that was like the hardest thing because he couldn't see the monitor. So we had to do that a couple of times, but yeah, timing was everything for this. So one of the props we used actually was a clapper and I've always wanted to use one. You always see them in the behind the scene film sets with the take one. And uh, we, yeah, we ordered one on Amazon. Super cheap actually, it was like 13 pounds. And yeah, we wrote some kind of fancy stuff on the clapper to make it look more like of a professional shoot. We had back with the boom pole. We had uh, Keenan with the B cam. And the whole idea of this shot was you would see myself walking down the street, but then you would hear the, the director say, cut, so the green scene would appear, and you would actually see the behind the scenes of the shot. So it was kind of like an inception sort of idea. We wanted to showcase to the audience how complex to create a shot is. You need the boom pole guy, you need the B-cam guy, you need the director saying cut, and you need the clapper. And I feel like the audience wasn't really expecting that when you would hear the cut, and then you would see kind of the effects being broken down, the green screen, the boom pole, the B cam, the clapper, and it all came together really nicely. We also utilized the iPhone quite a bit on the shoot. We used the voice memo app to create those cut and the, the voiceovers and stuff like that. So we all, had, we all gathered around the phone and uh, here's some behind the scenes of us doing that. Basically, we're gonna record um, some audio into um, an iPhone because we don't actually have the mics plugged in, so. Which is so gonna... ironic because we've got a legit boom mic and dead cat there. But we're going for sure. iPhone audio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that went pretty well, guys. Do it again. Let's do it again. Uh, Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> So going over the layers of the final shot, this was the first back plate. So it's myself in front of the green screen. And then in post, I'd key out the green screen, add some other back plates of streets. We got one of the tram and I would insert that behind myself. And then in post again, as soon as I added the, the voiceovers of the direct saying cut, I would just literally switch off the keying uh, effect and after effects and it would reveal the behind the scenes of the whole shot. And this is the final shot. Also, I forgot to add, the reason why I wanted Bobby to make sure the clapper was filling the whole frame is because I wanted, as soon as he had filled the frame and he brought down his hands, I would mask the top layer and it would go into a different shot. And that was kind of my exit of that scene. Okay, so the last sequence we're gonna be discussing is the last shot of the video. And it's me on the island, looking at my laptop and then suddenly you see people appear next to me and then disappear and then some 3D elements. It was quite complicated to kind of, uh, 
share what I had in mind to people because I haven't really seen it being done that well. I haven't really seen it at all being done. So it's quite hard to kind of showcase what I was uh, envisioning, but I think we definitely got what I wanted. And here are some behind the scenes of that. So you control it through the app and you can hopefully program it to go a certain speed. And that's what we're going to be doing. You can program it through the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. I'll just do it now. Oh, it's not stopping. <laughs> it's not stopping. Oh, God. No, stop. Okay. All right, so we've got the slider set up now. We had to opt for the two tripods on either side because it was just tipping and you don't want a black magic falling over. The hardest part of that shoot was the lighting. We were shooting during sunset, so the sky was changing every two seconds. So we had to change the dome light appropriately and we had to make sure no one, again, budge the tripod because as soon as we set that slider in place no one could move it because when we pieced together the layers you would definitely see that shift if someone was a bit out of frame or yeah we had to make sure the island was lined up and yeah it was kind of stressful but we definitely got there in the end. The reason why we used an automatic slider was well a manual slider would just never work for the shot no way that's no way someone would get the exact same speed and movement of the of the manual slider we had to make sure an automatic one was there so we knew that every time we got the back plate it was exactly the same speed the same movement so the automatic slider came in handy for that so the layers of this shot was the first back plate was of myself with no one around me and then we ran the slider for about 10 seconds reset it and then we well, I got out of the frame and then Keenan came in, pretended he was talking to me, got the 10 seconds, reset the slider and so on with Oliver J and back. And they had to kind of rehack to like these 3D elements coming up. So a bit of acting there. But um, I think the, like I said, the automatic slider was, was the one. It really helped make sure everything was kind of symmetrical and lined up perfectly. The last missing piece to the puzzle was the visual effects. My epic friend Aaron helped me out on that and he crushed it. So like I said, back in Oliver J had to pretend that there were some elements coming up when they were on the island. And we were gonna then in post, put some screen recordings of a Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro? A Premiere Pro timeline. We got some NVIDIA elements in there. He also made a 3D razor blade, which was awesome to see and he rotated it. And you saw the rotation tools come up and the scale tools come up. So going over the layers again of this shot, this was the back plate. It was of myself on the laptop. And then suddenly you got Keenan coming up on my right. You've got Oliver J coming up on my left and then back finally. And then the last piece of the puzzle was the visual effects. And this is the final shot. And that is it guys, that is the final sequence we're going to be discussing today. Let me know in the comments which one was your favourite and if there's any others you want me to break down, uh, just send me a DM on Instagram or just comment below and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.